bit more than five years ago, some good friends of ours, the Tabushas, were making a bar mitzvah for their twin boys. Mrs. Tabush, I think, hails from Minneapolis, and her family was very close with many people there. And they called us and asked, could we host people for Shabbos? Obviously, it was our, our pleasure. Little did I know that the, our guest for that Shabbos was going to be Rav Leif Shlita and his Rebetzin. And I will tell you, as an aide on that Shabbos, that our house turned into Grand Central Station. Avi Simon the Dayan Almonas, Talmidim, Talmidois, people are struggling with Shaduchim, Shalom Bayes, Shiurim, left and right. The house turned into a Mo'in of Chesed from that, from that Shabbos. We enjoyed a wonderful Shabbos, it was very late. And since that Shabbos, I've always had a twinkle in my eye and a sparkle in my heart whenever I hear and see that Rav Leif is speaking anywhere. As such, my nichbad hayoyim, that Kilo Kedosh of the Baltimore welcomes Rav Leif to be machazik Dov. and Rav Shlita, truth be known, 62 years ago, last week, uh, Rav Neuberger Zatzal traveled to Cincinnati, Ohio. <coughs> Rav Leza Silva Zatzal was the Masada Kedushin, and Rav Neuberger read the Ksuba at my parents' wedding 62 years ago. My father Zatzal learned by the Rosh Hashiva Rav Rudiman for nine years, and so our family considers Baltimore, especially since the Shankers of Baltimore read my parents' Shidduch, uh, Rabbi Shankers, that's all. Uh, so we find uh, a closeness, our family, to Baltimore and Akaras HaTayv. Rishustra Rabbonim, Shlita, Rav Heber, Rav Berger for putting this together. Achai Vareya. The Chesed Elyon, the world today, has a different take on mental illness. But 50 years ago in Eretz Yisrael, they had no way to deal with people who were mentally incapacitated. So they had what was called a Bet Meshugayim, a Meshugayim Hayz. And unfortunately, individuals who were not able to be mainstreamed in society would languish there, sometimes for decades. <coughs> There was a particular fellow who every year would come before an eminent panel of psychologists and psychiatrists, and he would scream at the top of his lungs, Ani normali, I'm normal. And they would say, Lo atamishuga. And they'd send him back to his room. This went on for 20 years, until finally they said, Atatsodek, atanormali, you're a normal fellow. You've grown, you can be integrated into society. And he's ready to run out, and they say, Lo, 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 rak, rega, tzachim lechtov bishvilcha ishur, petek. We have to write a certificate of normalcy for you. So they wrote, on this and this date, and this and this year, this and this month, Pliny ben Pliny has been certified normal, and they all signed on the petek. Right then and there, he made a Kabbalah. He was a Kabbalah himself. The Hayyais, for 20 years, he lived with Meshigayim, he ate with them, he slept with them. He'll have nothing to do with a Meshugan. If there's any Meshugan, he's in a different direction, nothing to do with somebody who's mentally unstable, unfortunately. Al Kolpanim, he packs his chamadan, his suitcase, and he makes his way to the next bus stop. And there comes an Eged bus. The doors open up, and he's about to climb the bus, and he remembers his Kabbalah. So he turns to the driver and he says, Nahak tagidli atano mali. Driver, tell me, are you normal? He says, Ani choshev. Ata choshev, ani yodeh, li ish petek, evo petek shacha. You think I know, I've got a certificate. Where's your certificate? He refused to get on the bus. He went to the only safe place, the Bet Meshugayim. Achai v'reyai. 
There are people screaming at the top of their lungs, Anino Mali. They've made a national pastime of beheading Jewish journalists and screaming to the world, Anino Mali. The decadence, the morality of our society, not getting into the details, we're all familiar with what's going on all over the world. And they're screaming, I need no money. We have the real Petek, we have the real Ishur, it's called the Teilag Besha. The Moors of Klal Yisrael are not judged by the morality of society at large. Just as the Rosh Hashiva Shlita said, and Rosh Hashiva Shlita said, it's a whole different approach to life. That's what the Navi Yeshaya says, V'amech kulam tzadikim. It means we are transplanted from a different world. We don't belong here. I'm not just talking about Baltimore or Minneapolis or Yerushalayim. Nobody belongs here. This is not our world. We come from a different world and after 120 years we're returning to that world. And when Klal Yisrael lives their life and celebrates the uniqueness of the Am Hanifchor Mamleches Kainim V'Goy Kadosh. Masa Yod Eliyaspor. That's when Rabbi Shlom takes pride. Every time you make a decision based on the Torah Hakdasha. We had a yid who was just nifted this week. His name was Rabbi Shlom Pearl. He was a school teacher, the age of 37. Didn't really know halacha. And somebody said to him, Pearl, you're wasting your time. Why don't you become a Baki in El Cheshavis? He did not learn the Mishnah Berurah. In his youth, he had been a marathon runner, always Shem Etara Mitzvahs, an FFB, from from birth, as opposed to an FFC, from from choice. You know what Albert Einstein said, by the way? Albert Einstein said that he regretted being born Jewish because then he couldn't make a decision to become Jewish. That's what he was purported to have said. So all of us FFBs who are so proud of our lineage, an FFC who makes a decision to become an Elach ben Teirah, Nishkin Pasha Dezach. Al Kopanim, he started learning Arach HaShulchan. He couldn't pick up a Mishnah Brura. He became a Baki, the school teacher in Hilchis Shabbos, Ad Kedei Kach that until a few weeks ago when Chaim Berlin on Shabbos, Yungalite, Bachar and Balabatim would line up 12, 15 deep after Shabbos to ask him intricate Shilas and Hilchah Shabbos. He gave 1,020 Shi'urim and Hilchah Shabbos in the shul that I'm the rov of Agudas Yisrael Beis Binyamin. He gave 1,000 Shi'urim in the bust in the night. He gave Shi'urim for Irgun Shirei Taira. And he taught our community in Klal Yisrael an incredible lesson that we march to the beat of a different drum. This morning, Mamish, this morning, I heard a Dvar Musa. You know, many years ago, when I lived in Cleveland, I was a Rebbe in the Masifta, I was very close to Velvel Destler Zatzal. He told me that in his youth he had a childhood friend whose name was Bensi Lapian. So the Michtav Meliyahu's son was close friends with the Leiv Eliyahu's sons. Rebel Lapian's son and Rebel Yedesla's sons were close friends. They went to Talmud Torah One day, Bensi Lapian comes running in from the marketplace and he says, Velva, you're not going to believe what I just heard. I was in the marketplace and the Yid and the Goy were getting into a fracas, into an altercation. The Yid wanted to purchase wood from the lumber merchant, the Goy. And the Goy told him, the any Yehudi said, you've got to pay me right now. And he says, COD, cash on delivery, you bring it to my home, I'll pay you. Right now, or forget about it. Right now, I'll pay you when you believe, bring it to me. I've been burned too many times, back and forth, and it's getting heated. All of a sudden, another guy runs out from the marketplace and he taps the first guy on the shoulder and he says, you can trust him. It's Elo. Akel Magoy. 
He knew that the Yidden were different and Elul, you can trust him. You know what Elul is all about? Elul is about turning to the Rabbeinu Shalom and saying, you can trust us. It's Elul. We're different. We handle different. We see things differently. We act differently. So the Dvar Musa, before I go a little weiter, Dr. Mayor Kaufman told me this morning of a student, University of Wyoming med Medical School, the dental school. And this fellow is an A student. And he went to Boulder, Colorado to visit some friends over the summer. And they told him that marijuana is legal in Colorado. He's an A student, he wants nothing of it. They convinced him, he took a toke, he took a drink, he took a puff, I'll never do this again. He goes back to Wyoming, he's enrolling in a special program for elite students, and they tested him. And he came out positive. And he explained to them that he had this marijuana when he was legal in Denver, in Colorado. And they said, but it's illegal in Wyoming. You may have had it there, but you're being tested here. They threw him out of the program, they threw him out of the school. And now the US government wants all the government grant funds back from this fellow. His entire life is ruined. You see, Rav Shleiman Pearl Zatzal, he realized that what's mutter in New York is not mutter in Shemaim. And even though there may be leniencies legally to allow certain things to be done here, kechut hasare in chosh and mishpat, he never veered from the Dalit Chalke Shulchan Aruch. And he became a master in Hel Chashanis. And that's how he lived his life. And El is the Yisoy that no matter what the mores of our society might be, the Beltway, believe it or not, you're not going to believe how long it took me to get here. You're in a lot of trouble. I left my house at 1 o'clock, I arrived here at 10 to 7. The Choch Magdala, I flew to Dulles. So Mamele, it took nearly three hours to get from Dulles to Baltimore, or Atera. So it took me a long time to get here. But you know what? All the moors of Washington, D.C., and Maryland, and the Northeast, and the United States, and the Welt, have nothing to do with Gan Eden, with Elam Haba, with the Bez and Shomala, with the Rebbe and Shlom. And that's what El is all about. El is to integrate to the Haggad and the Welt. I always tell my Elam Shabbos Haggadl, Vos is Leil Seder, to give over to the children so the Haggad and the Welt. That is the Rebbe and Shlom in the Welt. That's Geula. In Panasa, in business, a person also has to exude Sadu Agot in the Welt. Not just to business partners and associates, but to your children and your family. I want to end the Hagdome with something that was said at a Levi in Tavshin Lamed Vov. A year of Al Chesed was Nifta. And the Rav, the former Rav of the White Shul, Rabbi Emeritus, Rabbi Pelkowitz al said the following thing. We all know that a malach cannot multitask. One tafkin, Mariviraber and Mortre Giftes that's all is love to come to Baltimore to the yeshiva, would tell us that a Rebbe has a tafkin. Nitzvah Kaifen Zain Peklach, give over the shear clearly, some zach. You have a mandate. A malach doesn't multitask. As we all know, the bane of society today is that nobody's concentrating on anybody. You pick up your child from carpool, you're on the phone, the kid's so excited. What does the child think? Who cares if there's a sale? Three chickens for $10, what's the nafkamina? The kid just got out of school. Empower the child at those limudim achashiv, but when you stay on the phone, don't bother me. You're multitasking. You're not focusing on anybody. You're not accomplishing a thing. The chesed al yin amalach cannot multitask. So therefore, Kodesh Baruch who sends three malachim to Avram Avinu, levaser esora, to heal Avram and mapecha stoim vamer. 
Fratzah Hakash, what's Gavriel doing by Avram Avinu? Mapecha Stoim Vamur. Go straight to Stoim Vamur. You didn't from Mazumin. There's Avram with two others. You don't need Gavriel there. And the Pshan is like this. Do you know when the world was created, the Malachim told the Kodesh Bochu, Hashem said, Nasa Odom Betsalminu Kibusenu Zakta Gemara. There's no tachlis to mankind, the frailty of the human condition. Don't even create them. They were vaporized by Hashem. The second cat said the same thing. The third cat kept quiet. But every day the malachim say the same thing. Look at the beheadings. Look at the wars. Look at the attrition. Look at the jealousy. Look at the anger. Look at the hatred. Look at the thievery, the chamas. If the Rebbein Shalom had sent Gavriel directly to Stein Vamera, he would have come back having witnessed the world through the prism of Stein Vamera. And he would have told the Rebbein Shalom why limit the destruction to Stein Vamera? They can't say, the So the Rebbein Shalom said, take down a ktove, take down an address. His name is Avram, he lives in Choron. Zevas can vow for a mensch. Now you can go destroy Stan Vamur. I guarantee you the Malachim are right now saying the same thing. Then the Rebbeinu says, take down an address in Baltimore. It's Wednesday night. People are tired. The Bnei Torah learned the entire day. The Bnei Torah Balabatim learned them work the entire day. The Rabbonim are exhausted. But they came together to share Chizuk V'idot. Came together here, the Rosh Hashiva Shlita, Rav Shraga Shlita, to be able to grow in their Avodas Hashem, to be Mach to the Rebbein Shalom. Now tell me about the rest of the world. That's what it means to live in Baltimore. That's what it means to have a Yeshiva and to have such Rosh Yeshiva and to have such Rabbonim and such Erluch Abnei Teira Balabatim. You validate the existence of the world. The room is packed. It's not like the Olam isn't ligging and the Asik isn't learning Torah. The Olam isn't renowned for the Chesed of Baltimore. Whether it's Hatzola, the Shemrim, all the organizations taking care of Klal Yisrael, taking care of the indigent, the wonderful Torah institutions. Come to gain the Malachim and they tell her, Stop off at this address. Shemrim Murim Shul, Wednesday night. And see what's going on. Now tell me about the rest of the world. You know, the Gemara Zokt in Mesech Tainis that there are three Mavteches. As Machlekes Rashi and Taisus, how exactly this works. But basically, the three Mavteches are never entrusted to man, at least not all three at the same time. The Mavteach of Chaya, of childbirth. The Mavteach of Trias Hamesim and the Mavteach of Gvuras Kishomim. You heard the Maisa from the Gemara? When a person is going to realize economic stability and success, when a person will be Matzliach in his Panos, it's no less than Trias Hamesim. It's the same verse. It's the same tefillah. When a person attempts to receive his parnosah, no less of an S than Tchiyas HaMesim. Or the Mauritian. Before anything grew, he had to be mispalo. Every nanosecond, the Rebbe Shem recreates the world. You want panosa? I know many people that before they make a cold call, they say a kapitel tilim, three kapitel tilim. Before they call a doctor with the result on a test, they make a kapitel, say kapitel tilim. Before they sell some insurance, they recite a capital. You bring them in right with a shud. Gimel shudfin ba'odam. Why should there be a shudif in your panasa? But begin to realize it's no less than that. The Gemara in Psachim connects 
Kosha lezavgon kekriyas yamsuf. Kosha panosin shal odom kekriyas yamsuf. What's the connection? What's the connection between a shidduch and kriyas yamsuf? Mogad pshat that it's 3,300 years since Kriyas Yamsuf and we're still singing Shira. By Shaduchim, Rabbi Tzim Levin, who was the wife of Rabbi Arya Levin, mother-in-law of Rav Yashiv, Zatzal, Zuchernam Tzadikim Levrach. The person wants to see Anoni HaKovet today, it's Shaduchim. Play it out in your own mind. He went here, she went there, he spoke to him. So what's the connection between the Anani HaKovid Shaduchim and Kriya Siamsov? You go to a Sheva Brachas and everybody regales you with all kinds of stories of Ashkachim Protas. Neit Shaykh. Now this one met that one. Seven days of Sheva Brachas, you can have 80 days of Sheva Brachas. What about five years later, are they still singing Shira? What about 50 years later, are they still singing Shira? Are they still thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the Nisim Gluyim of Shaduchim? Do you wake up in the morning like Rabbi Yisrael Salanta and wake up your children or Yeniklach and say, King? Your world is awaiting your sovereign rule. What do you scream at them not to be late for the bus? Do you thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu every day for the gift of childbirth? I'm very involved with a time and with Boney Olam. You think it's so easy to have children? To dove a it? To adopt a child today is impossible. Talk to the Rabbanim. Do you give shvach v'aydo when you walk your baby down the aisle? Do you give shvach v'aydo when you come to your enoklis chasana? Do you say hal with a bracha? Where's the shira? Do you give shira on your panosa? The Boch Hashem, you have a thriving practice, you have patience. I see one of the noted doctors in the community who I know very well, I'm not going to mention his name. Boch Hashem, and ask him, B'tzorach Yitzibu Be'amuna, and Machta Shtikol Panosa. We thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu to pay the mortgage, put gas in the car. Such a double push it, it's a mess. It's like Tchiyas HaMesim. Kfuras Kishomim. I'll tell you a maestro that happened, not in Minneapolis, not in Baltimore, not in Yerushalayim or in Bnei Brak, but in a quaint little shtetl called Flatbush, New York. And who told me this maestro? A native son of Baltimore. His name is Tzvi Nochem Rosen. Velva Rosen was an aide by my chasana 35 years ago in Cleveland. Very close to my shver, but don't exact sound. I'll go upon him. Tzvi Nachem Rosen told me to my sister. If you want to prot him, you can all call him up tonight. He'd love to hear from you. And if you have a maestad, he surely wants to hear from you. <coughs> I'll go upon him. In Flatbush, there was a fellow who was out of work for seven years. That mini depression we had a number of years ago. He had been making over $300,000 a year, which is a Shana Pardola in Flatbush. And Poshit, he was out of work for seven years. He's contacted by a headhunter, and he goes to the interview. And he aces the interview. He had a Rashi, 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 he had a Rashi. After the entire interview, the fellow turns to him and says, I have just one question to ask you. Nineteen other people are interviewing for this job today. Why should I give it to you? You're organized? They're organized. You have a background? They have a background. You have connections? They have connections. He was flat-footed. He didn't know what to say. He walked out knowing that he lost the job. About 11 o'clock at night, he gets a phone call. I'd love you to come over to my office. I'm still here. We'll sign some papers. I'm going to hire you. Okay. The next day, he tells his wife. Okay, I know by you it's called Seven Mile Market, but us it's called Pomegranate. I'll go upon him. He tells his wife that 
Go to Pomegranate and get all the delicacies you haven't had for seven years. Use the credit card sheet. Had fiscal awareness. They told me this family, without Taimchei Shabbos, wouldn't have had what to eat during the week. Taimchei Shabbos fed them from Shabbos and the carryover was for the week. And by every, and especially, especially buy the seven-layer cake that the kids love. Fine. They have this Gavaldi Gesuda Sridor the next day. And everyone's singing, and he's regaling them every prat of the Ashkoch and pratis of the job. And then she takes out this huge seven layer cake, okay? and she's about to slice it for the children, and he says, Nay, the seven layer cake is only for Shloimi. He gets a few slices now before he goes to bed, and he can take it to Yeshiva tomorrow. It's his cake. Now, everyone in the family, there was these kids, why dafka Shloimi? So he tells them the rest of the story. He comes to this fellow's office at 11 o'clock and he says, how did I get the job? He told him like this. Shem Shabbos is mentioned by Rav Shragi. There's another shul in Flatbush called Rav Landau Shul Varetsky. Also that has Minyonim. Could be near your shul. Davin's there. I think Lakewood Davin's over there. Akopanim, it's different shuls. Akopanim, because I've, I've seen Rabbi Malkiel. Akopanim, so what happens is, is that the fella is exhausted. He interviewed 19 people. <clears throat> Drives three times around the block. Can't find a parking space. Finally, he finds a spot. Comes into the shul. 10 o'clock, Mayrev. Jammed. There's no room to sit. He's exhausted. He resigns himself for lean against the wall. And all Davin hanging onto the wall. All of a sudden, they start Mayri, they dove in the Sachsvar, but Asher Amalais, and this kid turns to him and says, Would you like a seat? And he says, Sure, I don't see one. He says, You're going to have my seat. He sits down on the chair, says, Shema. He's looking at the kid, he says, I know this kid. This is such and such Rosh Yeshiva is a son. And I just gave a large endowment to that Yeshiva. And the middle of the kid notices me. And this, this is my seat. I paid for this seat. This is Lamais in my chair. After davening, he walks over to the boy and he says, so you're so-and-so? He says, no. He says, your father's not the Rosh Hashiva? He says, no. He says, my father doesn't have a job. <laughs> he says, really? So why did you give me this chair? He says, you look like you could use a break. I said, what's your name? He told me the name. A light bulb went off. I went back to my office, looked at my papers. <clears throat> this was your son, Shlemy. And I said to myself, Shukubinuk of the Gemara at the end of Sukkah, a child says in the marketplace, if this is the kind of child you raised, I want you to work for me. You know what I was nispoiled from? It wasn't just nispoiled from the boss. I was nispoiled from the parents. That they raised a child who for seven years lived in abject poverty. For seven years they didn't have a parnosa. Nobody was giving them a break. And what rolls off the child's lips? You look like you could use a break. I'm giving you a break. The Baal Shuva in Minneapolis, Daniel Alevi, once asked me, why is the brocha hamoitzi lecha min ha'oritz? It should be hamoitzi lecha min ha'adomo. The Maral says that the reason why a person is called Adam, the Gemara says a person is not Adam ha'sholem until he gets married. Vas hepes, alant gewaldik, says the Maral, the loshen Adam is mi loshen ha'adomo. It's fertile. And the same way the ground produces fruit, a person is not realizing his fruition until he produces fruit. And I would venture to say, even if you're not zeicha to your own progeny, but you get married, your wife is mishapa, your midas refines your character, you're produced. It's a whole different mitzvah. So Adama seems to denote fertile land. Oretz is dry, arid land. Eretz, zovas cholavad vosh, lofiyani azdaiti, is a chiddish. They even though it's Eretz, it's crappy, it's rocky, still produces. 
So Daniel Levy, Minneapolis, asked me years ago, why don't we make a bracha? Hamoitzi lechem in Adom. You know what I told him? A contemporary of the Chidor said, what's the bracha you recite? On Mon? Hamoitzi lechem in Hashemayim. So when a person takes a piece of bread and he makes a bracha, Hamoitzi lechem in Oretz, he's saying, Rabbeinu Shalolam, I realize that the same way there was a nest that was manifest in the Mon, because it's impossible for the heaven to deliver bread, it's impossible for the earth to bring up bread. That's what you have to have in mind. The Ramban says, Eretz Yisrael, no one can grow the land except for the Yidden. Because they have a magic touch, a Kedusha, a connection to Kedusha and Sa'aretz. But that's when we realize who we are and what we are. When Midian, the Koim Nikmas, B'nai Yisrael, Meis HaMidyonim, the Medrash says, 36,000 soldiers went to war. 12,000 12 shvatim, 3,000 from each shavit. And the Medrash goes on to say, 1,000 went to war. 1,000 were the armor bearers, like the logistics people, calling in the airstrike. And 1,000 David. And where did they daven? They daven in the field. For Tabchatzka Levenstein, who were these soldiers? The Gemara says they were the tzaddikim. Put on shalyad and shalraish. And who was mitzava them? The rabbeinu shaloyim. So you need a bissel tefillah. Why not around the Mishkin and the Shtibel? Why have they go in the field? So you would think it's to inspire the soldiers. You see the danger that they're fraught in the situation. So you're going to daven better. Name Zokrab Sachs. This is a Gavaldagi Yisoy. Pratzel the Meshgech and Panevish and the Mir and Pesach Tikven and one more place. He was also uh, Panevish, Mir, Pesach Tikven, and then he was in Eretz Yisrael and Yishalayim for a thing, communist Meshgech for a while. Also in America. Meshgech, what did he say to Pratzel? He says, because let's, let's try to flesh this out. To paraphrase Pratzel. You have Moshe. And also by Geben Ashis. So he's ready to throw the spear. He's aiming out for Mark. And next to him is the Tzadik, Agrain, Rav Moshe, Heinemann, and he's davening for him. And all of a sudden he lets go and he hits the target. So Moshe Leif can trachen. I was trained very nicely. I had a good Rosh Hashiv in the army. So Moshe Heinem is right near there to remind me it has nothing to do with me. It's all the Rabbeinu Shalilah. It's the Koyach HaTfilah. There's no room for Koyach Yivayit Samyodi Osle Yasechai Lazeh. It is only the Tfilahs of the Tzadikim that are doing what they're doing. I said this over when we had an Asifa for the Matzav and Eretz Yisrael. When you say Tilim, you think of those tunnels. You think of those brave soldiers crawling into the tunnels to find the Kablanim and your tefillahs are accompanying them. That's the Kayach of tefillah. Well, the boy said, when you go to earn a Parnosa today, you're going to war. It's a battle. And you need the Kayach of the Rebbein Shalom, just as the earth for anything to grow, you need the Rebbein Shalom. It seems to me that in our door, as if Rav Shraga said, we have to introduce Kedusha in everything that we do. We have to introduce the Rabbeinu Shalom. Leil HaSeda Sadar got in the veld. Palnosa Sadar got in the veld. It's Tchiyas HaMesim. It's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And like the Chofetz Chaim Zatzal says, you open up franchises, putting more spigots on the same barrel of wine, you're getting the same amount. The challenge is if we understand and realize this. Ultimo is the Kehila of Bnei Aliyah. Integrated in that Torah and Avaida is a work ethic. World renowned for Erlichkeit. Many hold government jobs. As I was passing by Langley, I know of a few people that work at Langley. Individuals who make a Kiddush Hashem, Vum Gate, Vum State. Who are going to be Machazak about these in Yonim? If not the B'nai Torah, who are part of a workforce, to always remember and realize a shidduch is anoni covet. It's a ness. 
And the shira that's necessary for the shidduch is not just sheva brachas, but months and years. Just as I give hakaras the tefter of Newburg of reading the ksuba by my father's chasna, it's not sali moli bolamay chaim. Sixty-two years ago, and Rabbi Mr. Shenka for reading the shidduch. My father used to learn Rabbi Shenka. So, but I've given shvach vayidov every shidduch that you have, every child that you have. It's tchias hamesim and the panosa that we have. That this concept of emuna, which is a real emuna, the goyim say seeing is believing. We say believing is seeing. Yezayichi, your son comes home with three briska matzis. Cholchei koydim zmanai, muta banos no achazmanai. There's not a vestige of anything royal achil over there. <laughs> Pay $75 for three matzis. Go explain to your goyish client that you got three crackers for $75. <laughs> Go explain to your goyish partner that you spent $250 for the perfect esrik. I know what the names of the local stores are. Wolbaum's three for a dollar lemon, but you got a deal $250 for an esri. Without the lul of Hadassim and Aravis, you could parcel 25 of love in the process. You spend $500 for a cleaning lady for the elusive public enemy number one, a tam tam or a pretzel. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. We don't make sense. We don't have to explain ourselves to anybody. Exactly as Rosh Hashanah said. Integrate, connect, make a Kiddush Hashem, but with the exact opposite. Masa Yodel is spar. When we realize that we're transplanted from a different place, and that's what El is. Halavaya gans your El. But if a guy in Kel can tell another guy that you can trust the Jew, it's El. So in Baltimore, and throughout the world, the Rebbein Shalom B'Siyat Rishmai will trust us for our Kabbalah during El. We will change effectively. And we'll be Zeicha, the Schus of the Torah Gdoisha, the Tzedakah and the Chesed and the Erlachkeit to a wonderful year. Shana Toiva Masuka. If us is Toiva Masuka, it's redundant. If it's sweet, it's good. But we should taste the sweetness. Sabeinu mitu vecha. Like the Goyen says, there's two types of spheres, having enough and ha- knowing they have enough. One without the other isn't sufficient. We should all have enough and know that we have enough. And the Helege Kehila of Bolton should be zeicha to Shaduchim, to Panosa, to Gezunt, to Hatzlocha B'Teiro, B'Chesed, or B'Yiru L'Malam and Ateva, we should all be zeicha to Aksivach Simetei V'Lon Amen.